Hello, I'm glad that you could join me tonight for tonight's Bible study, continuing through the uh, Bible. And uh, you see right here, it's uh, the Revelation will be tomorrow, starting Revelation. But today, the book of Jude, uh, who was a brother, stepbrother of Jesus, by way of Mary, uh, because uh, Joseph was not Jesus' natural father. He was stepfather because God was Jesus' father. and Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so Jude gives us uh, some pretty amazing word that we don't find other places in the scripture, and yet it's uh, profound and uh, helps us to know that we need to stay on the right path. Uh, if those that came before us veered off and took the wrong turn, we could too. <laughs> and so, uh, I thank uh, the Lord for placing this in the Holy Scripture. And uh, just 18, actually 25 powerful verses. And uh, I'm going to uh, make it, make my way through it quickly. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit along the way, even. Uh, but. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, who was also the brother of Jesus. If we uh, read the book of James. To those who are called, sanctified by God the Father and preserved by Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you as you walk with the Lord, right? Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. We need to contend and fight that the that the word of God is not blasphemy. The word of God is not altered. The word of God stays uh, exactly the way that it was written and that, and that evil men don't creep in and make good evil and evil good. Because for Jude, he says, certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for condemnation, not ungodly men, who turn the grace of God into lewdness. Does that sound familiar? That we have people who turn the grace of God into lewdness in the church today? We do. And deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to remind you, though, you once knew this, that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe that even though he saved them all, there were people who would not follow, right? And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. They didn't uh, maintain their own abode, but decided they wanted to hang out with women. And we'll see that it says, as Sodom and Gomorrah in these cities around them, in the similar manner, these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, have set forth as an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And so the angels left their abode and like Sodom and Gomorrah, 
they sought after strange flesh. Uh, likewise, also, these dreamers defiled the flesh, rejected authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed over the body of Moses, dared not to bring against them a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. And so we find another fact. The angels left their own abode. We know that uh, it says before the flood that when the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair, uh, that they went in with them and that because of that, there was a race that rose up called the Nephilim, of which uh, we believe that Goliath, who was nine feet tall, was one of them. And there were several of them. Uh, Nephilim. And so the angels did what they should not have done and they became fallen angels with Satan, uh, and he enticed them, and they followed after that, and they were reserved into judgment because of it. But Michael said he wouldn't speak evil against even Satan, but he would let the Lord rebuke him. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know, naturally, like brute beasts in these things, they corrupt themselves. So they act like animals. You know anybody who acts like animals? Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and have run greedily in the era of Balaam, for profit, and perish in the rebellion of Korah, who is one of those in that left out of Egypt and did not continue to follow after Moses, but actually uh, challenged him and his authority. Yeah. And Moses said, if the Lord is with me today, let him do something new and open up the earth and swallow you alive into the pit. And guess what happened? The earth opened up and and those of Korah that were following after him in rebellion, and it wasn't Korah himself, but they were the descendants of Korah, were swallowed alive in the pit. They could hear them screaming for their lives as they fell in uh, to the earth. And these are spots in your love feast while they feast and with you without fear, serving only themselves. These are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled out by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming up in their own shame, wandering stars, for whom is reserved the blackness of of darkness forever. Now, what occurred to me that I said it wasn't Cora, but it could have very well been Cora. I have to go back through and read that again. But we know that the descendants of Cora took care of uh, the sacred articles in the temple, like the Ark of the Covenant they carried and other uh, honorable things like that. So, like I said, We'd have to go back through and see for sure, but I don't have time tonight to go back through and, and see. But they call it the Rebellion of Korah, so he could have very well been uh, there. Uh, and his descendants carried on their work in the temple. Uh, now... Now Enoch, uh, the seventh uh, from Adam, 
you know, Enoch is the one uh, that it says he walked with God and was no more. Uh, they Many believe that he is one of the two witnesses that will come back and uh, be the two witnesses here on the earth to warn people of the uh, coming judgment. Although I would say the majority believe it's Moses and Elijah. But Enoch was one man that uh, his death was not mentioned in the Bible. It said he walked with God and was no more like he was just taken up. They looked for him and couldn't find him. <laughs> uh, and behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 angels. He, let me say this again. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints. The Lord's going to come <laughs> with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in the ungodly ways in and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and, their, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. People, what we would call blowing smoke. <laughs> they, they, they make people feel good, all right, for their own advantage. But, you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that, that there would be mockers in the last times who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts, sensual persons who cause divisions and not having the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by their flesh. And so, what's he say? We should be trying to have compassion and save people that are destined to go to hell if somebody doesn't reach out and grab hold of them and give them the good word. Uh, it was, today I was reading, oh, it was Henry Blackaby saying that people are dying without ever hearing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's a shame in today's day and age that anybody would die without hearing about Jesus. Now, the final two verses of Jude. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, to present you faultless before the presence of his Glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. And I pray that you'll just look at this, especially read those last two verses over and over again. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to our God and Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Now I'll say amen to you. Praise the Lord and be a blessing for him. In Jesus' name, please keep Darlene in prayer. We're going for a biopsy tomorrow. Bye-bye.